I wanted to give another little review and some additional information about some strength and materials topics. And the first thing I'm going to talk about something maybe not, you haven't seen before, but it's called stress tensors. And we're going to use our problem from class that we did where we had a beam with a bending moment and a distributed load. And at the cross section at point A, we ended up with uh, two stress states, one at the centroid, which had a shear stress of 2.7 KSI, and one at the bottom of the cross section that had a tensile stress of 50.3 KSI. And what I wanted to show you is that you can write the stress state in a simpler form and include all the information about the stresses at a specific point by writing it in a matrix form, which we're going to call a stress tensor. And in general, if you have a, a 2D state of stress, we can write our stress tensor in this form here where we have the two normal stresses on the diagonal, sigma x and sigma y, and then we have on the other diagonal we have the shear stresses, the shear xy and shear yz. Shear yz is usually the same thing as shear xy, so it's the same, same value. So we call this our general form, and if we um, take our uh, cross section at the centroid and we want to write that as a stress tensor. We had no normal stresses and we had a shear stress of 2.7. So we'll put the 2.7 in the shear stress spot and we'll put zeros in the normal stress and that'll be our stress tensor. And at the um, bottom of the cross section there was a different state of stress so we can write a different stress tensor at that location. That one had a normal stress in the x direction of 50.3 and in the y direction we had nothing and we had no shear stress. So that just has one term in that, but it describes the state of stress. And we can basically use this, um, this form of stress as an easy way to write it and to do mathematical operations with it. You can um, do things like find um, the stress transformations and things like that using this format. So for a 3D stress state, uh, we just need to include additional components. And for a general 3D stress, there's nine different components of stress, so we can write them all as uh, in the stress tensor. The normal stresses go on the, on the diagonal, sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z, and then the shear stresses uh, fill in the other spots, and then the subscripts um, are kind of match up on the, on the other opposite diagonals. And that would be a 3D stress state written in tensor form. The next topic I wanted to go back to is stress transformations. Now that we've kind of explained stress tensors a little bit, I wanted to go back and talk about stress transformations. And at each location, we've calculated the stresses in a what we call a Cartesian direction, which is the x, y, z directions. Those are the directions that we have formulas for that we can write stresses in. And the subscripts on those uh, stresses indicate the direction, sigma x, sigma y, you know, indicate that the normal stresses are in the x and y directions. And the shear stresses are in, in, on a certain um, plane in a certain direction. So, so for a 3D stress state, you see there's um, nine different stresses we could consider, or uh, there's three normal stresses and there's three different shear stresses, but they get repeated in different directions. If you look at a 2D stress state, which is the second picture there, written in a, on a 3D form, um, you see that there's two normal stresses and a shear stress, and usually we write that as a little square, as a 2D um, problem with the two normal stresses and the shear stress. And if we want to examine the stress state at a different orientation, so we want to rotate the element to a different orientation to find the stresses that act on it at a different orientation. Uh, we can use our stress transformation calculations to do this. We'll modify the subscripts to indicate that there's a new direction, that there's x prime direction, a y prime direction. And you see in the image there that you rotate it through some angle theta and we can find um, the new stresses. The theta there is the rotation of the x-axis to the x prime axis. And usually an engineer is interested in probably the maximum stresses that are going to occur. So you might want to find the orientation where that maximum stress is going to occur. And those are called our principal stresses. The, the uh, values of the stress that are the maximum. So usually sigma 1 would be the maximum stress. Sigma 2 would be the minimum normal stress. 
And the orientation that this takes where those stresses occur are called the principal planes. So theta P1 is the rotation of the x-axis to the uh, direction of sigma 1 where the maximum stress occurs. Theta P2 is the rotation of the x-axis to the x double prime axis there, that which is the direction at which we have the minimum normal stress, sigma 2. There's also a maximum in-plane shear stress, uh, which is um, the rotation in which you have the maximum shear stress. And I don't have the, the picture here for that, but you've seen that before. So there's equations or formulas that go along with this, and Mohr's circle is based off of these equations, and you've seen and used these equations in your strength and materials class. So just a review of what they are. Um, they're derived for a 2D stress state, um, but we can use them for 3D stresses. Usually you just do one rotation at a time around one axis, and then you can apply it to another axis. But, so you just kind of step through it to do rotations. Usually we'll only do like one rotation and there'll be a, a third direction of, of stress. Also if we write our stresses as a tensor, um, we can use the eigenvalues of the matrix, which you've seen that in your linear algebra class. Um, the eigenvalues are actually the principal stresses. So sigma 1 and sigma 2 are the, the principal stresses. Um, the formulas for the stress transformation uh, are shown here, and you've seen these before, but we have kind of an average normal stress is the first term, and then there's the difference between the normal stresses over 2 with a cosine, and we have some shear stresses with a sine, and the, some of them are positive, some of them are negative, depending on uh, which direction you're trying to calculate. And for the principal stresses, uh, they're used, it's the same formula. We have the average normal stress plus or minus a square root term there. Uh, sigma 1 is when you use the plus. Sigma 2 is when you use the minus. Sigma 1 gives you the maximum stress. Sigma 2 is going to give us the minimum stress. And the direction of theta p is found from that uh, tangent equation there. So looking for theta p, you would use an inverse tangent function. And the last thing there is the maximum in-plane shear stress, which is that square root term from uh, the principal stress equation. Just to point out a few things about the principal planes with those angles and the direction that those take, uh, one thing to note uh, with this is that when you're doing the stress transformation equations, uh, a little bit of information is left out when you're doing this inverse tangent function um, it doesn't really give you all the possible solutions. It'll, usually your calculator only gives you a few uh, values, a range of values that isn't exactly the full um, picture of what you're, you're needing. So your calculator gives you a range of negative 90 to plus 90. Um, but sometimes the rotation may have been outside of that range that you really needed. So how do you know which answer is correct? If you refer to Moore's circle, let's take an example here of Moore's circle where we have the normal stress on the horizontal shear stress going down is vertical. That in this example here, um, the, the term sigma x minus sigma y over 2 will end up with a positive value. And the shear um, in the, is in the positive direction. They're both positive, so when you take the inverse tangent, it's going to give you a positive answer. So you're going to find that um, 2 theta p on the picture there is that angle. And that's the right angle you want to take from x to the positive um, uh, sigma direction. The rotation of the x-axis to the principal plane is positive. In this case, it's a, it's a counterclockwise rotation, and somewhere in the range of 0 to 45 degrees. Uh, but in this second case, you notice here that uh, the term sigma x sigma y over 2 will probably give you a negative number. And the sh shear is positive here. So when you take this inverse tangent function, it's going to give you a negative value. And it's going to give you a negative value between um, 0 and negative 90 degrees. And it's the angle that it's going to give you is this angle over here uh, that's from the calculator. What you really want for 2 theta p1 is this other angle. This is the one that you want, um, which is going to be different from what your calculator would give you. So in order to find the correct value for um, theta p1, you need to modify what the calculator gives you and um, indicate that that's basically a 
that two theta p one and the other angle add up to be 180 degrees, and you can use that relationship. Actually, the other one is two theta p two, which is the rotation of the x-axis to the minimum stress. So that's uh, that's the difference between theta p one and theta p two. And uh, that's a little bit of information for you about stress transformations, and hopefully you find this useful.